Hi guys, my name is Crystal. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome old subscribers, welcome new. If you like my videos, please press the like button and please do subscribe. It's Friday morning, the sun is out and it's hot once again and it's really hot again. Last night I struggled to go to sleep. I was up and down like a yo-yo trying to put cold water all over myself. Alexa, good morning. Good morning. Today is International Women in Engineering Day, which raises the profile of women engineers and encourages more people to consider engineering as a profession. To hear about some of my favorite women in maths and science, ask me, who inspires you? Alexa, who inspires you? I'm inspired by technology pioneers. I'm a big fan of Ada Lovelace, Hedy Lamarr and Grace Hopper. Without them, it's unlikely you'd be talking to me today. Alexa, what's the time? The time is 8.45 a.m. Alexa, what's the date today? Alexa, the date? Today is Friday, June 23rd. It's Friday, June 23rd. Alexa, what's the weather like in Rochester? Alexa, what's the weather like today? Currently, in Rochester it's 21 degrees Celsius with clear skies and sun. Today, you can expect partly sunny weather, with a high of 27 degrees and a low of 15 degrees. Alexa, can you tell me a joke? I recently got a pet mute, and he's called Tiny. I call him Tiny because he's my mute. Alexa, whose birthday is it today? Today's famous birthdays include French Association football player and manager Zindine Zidane, Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States Clarence Thomas, French Association football player Patrick Vieira, Australian actor Joe Edgerton, and American director, writer, and producer Joss Webbing. Right guys, so like I said, it's Friday. It's very, very hot still. It's 24 degrees inside this flat with fans blowing. 24 degrees is hot. It's 24 and a half degrees. I mean, it's more hot in this flat than it is outside. It's awful. You struggle to breathe. You struggle to walk. You drip with sweat just doing the minutest of activities. I'm just making myself a cup of coffee, guys. So let's see what's on the radio. Alexa, LBC Radio. LBC London from Global Player. Consultation. Visit smileinaday.co.uk or call TDC Holly Street on 0203 733 4986. We're now part of Cooper. Call Vic Ferrari now 0345 6060 LBC. No frippery, foofery, or general tomfoolery. No chicanery, gym crackery, or traditional gadzookery. No unwanted accessory or unforeseen treachery. No underhand, sleight of hand, or tricky bits you can't understand. No chaff, faff, fuss, or fluff. No guff, just enough. Everything you precisely need without anything you specifically don't. Superscript. Business insurance that's right on the money. Superscript is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. When India's Cholan dynasty fuses with North and South Indian cuisine, Using only the grandest spices from the Indian continent, a grand experience is certain. Grand flavors for grand get-togethers. Overlooking London's Grand River. For lunch or dinner, the Grand Chulan Restaurant, Docklands. Book your table or function now at grandchulan.com. Lots of us are now navigating a permanent shift to hybrid working. Moment, so we don't want to listen to any more of those. So, right, um, last night, last night I took Max out for a walk. I wasn't feeling particularly happy, although 
I try to cheer myself up because I live by myself and a lot, of, a lot of the time you can feel quite down and depressed, stuck in four walls. But I've got Max, so Max cheers me up, my two cats, and I've got things to keep me amused, books, DVDs, uh, audio, audible books. Now I've got books on Audible on the Amazon Alexa, so I'm not short of things to do. But as you know, in this hot weather, you open all the windows, and the heat is exhausting. Um, everybody opens their windows, and these flats are really, really, really close together. So you can hear absolutely everything. So you'll be sat watching your telly, Mine is near the window because that's where my sockets are to all the TV paraphernalia. And you can hear plates bang, people talking what they're saying, uh, dogs yelping, barking, and it's, it's difficult to concentrate. And in this extensive heat, it's easy to get angry for no reason. So last night was a bit bit hard to get through. I mean, this is, the heat's lovely, but I haven't been going anywhere. I've not been going to the seaside. I've not, I've not been really, like, appreciating it because the cost of living is awful. People can't afford to go on holiday. They're stuck indoors and you do get irritable, irritated and annoyed with everything. If you don't get a break from the mundane life, that goes on. Last night, around seven-ish, um, I take Max, my dog, for a walk and I've managed to get myself wound up. Um, I try not to, but it's not easy when you're on your own with no one to talk to and things piss you off. I'm just being open about it, things do piss you off. Normally, I, 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 sometimes I get very irate and I just get cross and you let, let off steam and that's healthy because if you keep anger and negative emotion in, it can make you feel positively ill. So I was getting wound up, but I managed to call off before I took Max out. So I took Max out for a walk. It had been lovely during the day, no, no annoyances, no nuisances, nothing. I was allowed to walk around without any interruptions or, 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 or things annoying me. In the afternoon, I'd gone round a different way. I hadn't gone onto the field to walk Max. I went around a different way and it was completely empty. Where they, where they put the gym equipment down Common Creek Wharf, where, where the gym equipment is, nobody was on that. Nobody was using that. No one was sat on benches. They were just builders banging. It was like a, a cheap set of EastEnders or Coronation Street. A cardboard street set up. Do you know what I mean? That's what it felt like. It was just me, on my own, walking around that area. No one sat on benches, just builders banging and, and annoying me, you know? Banging. So I, I couldn't sit down. I couldn't sit down and relax or read a book or anything because you had... Builders banging. Then I tried to, to enjoy the sea area and walk over the little bridge and again you had every time I, I went to sit down or relax there was builders making noise, right? You, I cannot sit down. I cannot sit down I mean, everybody wears shorts and t-shirts in this weather. It's bloody hot. I'm supposed to sit down in a great big long coat and a pair of welly boots. I mean, really. Older people are wearing cotton dresses and wearing shorts and vests and their little, like, Australian hats. There's nothing unusual in that. So I can't sit on the bench. I can't look at the sea without some racket. So I walked 
walk slowly and come back inside my flat and I was sat in here by myself getting irritated with the heat. Max was like comatose, just laid there. The cats just sunk because they've got really like loads of fur. So then I've got to wait again until I go out around 7pm. So I've, I've, I've just sat here, just sat listening to uh, documentaries on, on the Alexa app on YouTube, watching the news. Um, more of the disasters, more people dying. Um, I have a few snacks and in this heat you don't want to eat, you just want to drink nice, cool coke or water. Zero sugar for me, I don't have uh, Coca-Cola with sugar in. Um, so around 7pm-ish and that character appears on the field about 8 so I have to get out early. And um, the whole backdrop is if, if Charlie's there when he isn't, because the guy that approached me was called Charlie. Charlie, Charlie the ex-alcoholic was on, you know, that time. It's like the setup's still there, the boy racers speeding their cars up and down, a silver car screeching its tyres, all the set was going round but Charlie wasn't there. Just me on my own walking around the field because like the last time that Charlie walked around the field with me, all these things were happening, you know, the screeching cars, people dressed up in their summer gear, holding hands uh, and, and that. So I've put a stop to that. I'd rather be on my own, right, than take on an ex-alcoholic. So we first of all I get onto the field and there's the screeching silver car over the water. <coughs> Go onto the field and I'm just walking around the field. One person is walking behind me. Um, and you know it's very very nice there's a man in a turquoise t-shirt sat on a bench the one that is usually got the bike he rides a bike he's a very big character and he rides a bicycle and he's a very large man with gray hair he was sat on the bench so I, I walked past him and then I just got off the field and I just walked back home on my own because I told you this Charlie character his girlfriend wanted to um, get rid of him. She didn't want to take him with her. So this guy was looking for someone to, to like, give him somewhere to live. And I thought, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not being used again. I've been used many times in my life and I'm not being used again. I've got a set routine now, I don't think I want anybody, um, I don't think I want or need anybody um, to upset the apple cart if you like, because I am at a place now where I'm healing from sexual abuse, I'm, I'm writing it down, I'm going through things that went on, trying to understand it, and I'm trying to heal myself because I can't afford uh, proper therapy. I don't mean just any Tom, Dick or Harry. I mean I need, I would have needed proper therapy from a trained psychiatrist that deals in child sex abuse because I've been abused as a child. It's nothing to do with schizophrenia. People, people that suffer child abuse go through many, many wide, wide range of emotions and they need help, but I've never got any. And unless you're rich, I can't afford a proper trained psychiatrist. Not someone in a, in a jacket pretending to be a psychiatrist, a real proper trained psychiatrist. That is what I need. I just haven't been getting the help I need. It's nothing to do with, you know, being mad. I was abused as a child and I don't trust people. I have trust issues. People lie and I don't trust them. 
My trust was breached when I was a child. I don't trust people, especially men. Right, so I came back in yesterday evening. I was getting WhatsApp messages from this guy that said he was living in Ireland. And I've now decided, right, that's it. They're all the same. They're either cheating on their wives or girlfriends and I'm going to be second best and I don't want to be second best. If somebody can't be my partner um, and uh, I'm not sharing a bloke with somebody else. That, you don't ask me to do that. And what about your wife and girlfriend? That's disgusting. You either leave them and move on or you, or you, you you just stay with your wife or girlfriend. You don't muck about with somebody else. It's disgusting. So I just cut them off and that's it. That's it. I get the gist of what's going on. I'm just being used for entertainment and amusement and I'm not willing to do that anymore. Right. And also they fuck with your head. These photographs and these pictures, videos they send you, the images retain in your brain. And then you might see what you look like that you've just seen on the telly outside. And it can drive you fucking round the bend, round the twist. So it's best not to... I don't want to see their lying images, their fake photographs and their videos. I don't want to see it. No one's brainwashing me. You are, there's either a real bloke out there for me that can spend real time with me. You can take the shit and fucking shovel it. I don't want it. So last night, I was watching videos on YouTube again before I went to bed uh, and um, the, it's just hard to sleep in, this weather is really hard to sleep in. I, I, I led down about half past eleven and just five minutes led on the bed. I'm, I'm stuck in sweat, swimming in sweat. I have to get up, sponge myself down with cold water and just walk around a bit and sit in front of a cold air fan and then try again about an hour later and then that goes on throughout the night till the temperature drops a little bit in the early hours of the morning and then when you finally get to go to sleep it's time to wake up and it's still hot when you wake up 24 degrees in here Alexa LBC radio LBC London from Global Care Murder after two people were stabbed at a hospital in northwest London. Armed officers were called to Central Middlesex Hospital on Wednesday afternoon. Matteo Bottarelli, who is 43, will appear at Wheelsden Magistrates Court later. A survey of operational prison staff in England and Wales has found half do not feel safe at work. It was carried out as part of a wider inquiry into the prison workforce by MPs on the Justice Committee. The group's chair, Sir Bob Neill, has warned the system is a potential time bomb. The ministers have announced a new pot of funding to support the rollout of artificial intelligence within the NHS in England. Trust will be able to bid for a share of £21 million for AI projects. Technology can be used to analyse scans and diagnose some conditions. In the city a short time ago, the FTSE 100 was down 50 at 74.51. The pound buys €1.16 and $1.27. LBC weather dry today with hazy sunshine for most places, but cloudier across Northern Ireland, Scotland and parts of northern England with outbreaks of rain, a high of 27 degrees. From Global's newsroom for LBC, I'm Thomas Watts. The pandemic. No one went through it in quite the same way. Share your experience to inform the UK COVID-19 inquiry. Search Every Story Matters. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Ferrari at breakfast. Good morning, three minutes after nine on Friday, June the 23rd. From education, education, education to 
Elevation, elevation, elevation. The plan possibly by Sir Keir Starmer to elevate Tony, sorry, Sir Tony Blair to the upper house to become a peer along with Gordon Brown. This is possibly so he can get through legislation in a conservative dominated house of Lords, but does it make sense to you? Here's a new piece of news that's utter rubbish, or rather perhaps it's not. One in five councils have gone 12 months without finding anyone for litter. Are you obviously telling me that we're suddenly agreed on a pleasant land litter? To me, in some areas, not all. In some areas, it's as bad as it's ever been. Think about the side of motorways. What the hell goes on on motorways? Do people just throw everything out the bloody window on motorways? It's incredible if you get, you know, you get, oh, I'm sorry, I'm but you get stuck on the M25 and you actually have to look out the window. There's so much litter. Uh, we'll come back to voter fraud, supposedly gerrymandering in reality. 14,000 of you couldn't vote in those local elections in parts of England earlier this year. And he's saying farewell to touring in the UK, last gig at Glasto or Glastonbury. I speak of Richard White. <laughs> transfer charge call. What the hell does that mean? Love and pays the call. And filed a story. What does that mean? I spoke to a man or woman who typed it out on a typewriter. World exclusive front page. World exclusive. <sighs> Fantastic. His then manager, John Reed, went absolutely mad. Saw me in the hotel lobby and thumped me straight in the face and we were wrestling in the lobby of this five-star hotel. Just fighting each other. And Mr. Reed was dragged off. I can see you can't see me, Mr. Reed. You know you did it. Uh, Mr. Reed was dragged off by the guitarist who still works with Sir Elton, David Johnston, the very long-haired guitarist. So when I, when I went to see Sir Elton um, this month, last month, last month of the O2, I said to him, <laughs> sorry, I stopped it. I said, you see that guy with the long hair playing the guitar? She said, yeah. Said, That's the man who pulled, me, pulled John Reed off, because he was on top of me, he was winning the fight, he was thumping me. That was the man who stopped the fight, <laughs> she said. Only you would talk about getting in a fight in Sydney, rather than enjoying the music. You remember a fist fight in Sydney? Well, I do, yeah. And then the punchline to this story, you'll like this one. Well, I'm enjoying it anyway. So the son then decided it was something like uh, uh, someone hit him in the nut nick or something like that. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, they, they need a photographer, and of course, Rupert Murdoch and so many papers in Australia. So they wanted a photographer, and they phoned me, and they said, we can't get the usual guy. Our crime photographer will come round. His name's somewhere, Jack. Hannity was like, I can't remember, Jack somebody anyway. So he, <laughs> he comes to my hotel room. Have I told you this story? So he comes to this hotel room. I don't knock on it. And I was like, G'day, you, Nick. Yeah, hi, are you, Jack? Yeah, g'day, mate. So you've been, you've been hit in the eye? Or, you, you know, you, you've been in a fight? Yes, I have, actually. had a bit of fun. You, you, you got slapped somewhere? Yeah, yeah, I, I got hit in the eye. Apparently London needs a picture. Let's take a look. And then I swear, he looked. Hit me straight in the eye, straight in the eye with the fact, yeah, it wasn't broad enough, that'll make it look better. I'm going to just took the pictures and my eyes, oh, I won't say what I said. Oh, gosh. I said, oh, gosh. Yeah, mate, that's what I need. Bang, 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 bang. And then he sat down and drank the entire mini bar. That's a police photographer in Sydney for you. So I've always had this certain. And then I saw, I physically saw him in Wembley about four or five, six years later with his then manager, John Reed, and we all just laughed about it. Funny old game. Should we move on? Uh, let's go into the funny again, politics. So Keir Starmer hinting he could elevate Tony Blair. I think we need the word sir before that, actually. And Gordon Brown of the House of Lords to help serve a future Labour government. The leader was criticised this week after senior party figures confirmed plans to pack the Lords so they outnumber the Conservatives in the upper chamber in the event Labour win at the next general election. This despite a promise to abolish the Lords. Hmm. Well, these are two controversial characters, aren't they? The Blair and Brown axis. 
LBC's political reporter Henry Riley is taking a look back at the controversial careers of the two men. There have only ever been 11 Prime Ministers who've gone into the House of Lords, seven of whom on hereditary grounds and four awarded life peerages after they left office. But could four be about to become six? Speculation that the heavyweights of the new Labour era, Sir Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, are set for seats in the upper house. They would be the first in 30 years. The last Prime Minister to be elevated was Margaret Thatcher in 1992. Advance, create and prefer. Right, guys, so... I just trying to get the rest of my day, which involves taking Max out for a walk. And just, um, keeping safe, really. Sometimes life is dangerous, and you just have to look after yourself. See you later.